When I'm not praying for death after every time I have to use the Ultimate Guitar mobile app, I like to answer questions that I get on YouTube. So let's get to it. Sean, I'm waiting so desperately for the day you will respond to some do you like this band question like no, they totally suck and are dumb, inept, or something similar. Please do it. You are always too kind. So I kind of hear you on this. I probably, I try to greet everything with positive energy. Sometimes that can get a little annoying. There are definitely things that I hate. So I'm going to unveil my least favorite band of all time. And I have a few different reasons they're my least favorite band. I'm talking about Kiss. I think Kiss sucks. I uh, lived in Las Vegas the same time Gene Simmons was doing his show and kind of crossed paths with him a few times. Total scumbag, sleaziest dude I've ever seen. Uh, the music, I just, I, I just don't like the music at all. Now, I do understand that maybe like if you grew up with it, like it, again, they're kind of before my time. Uh, if you grew up with it, it might've been a different story, just kind of like how it was like a, a whole different thing. But uh, yeah, I hate Kiss. And another reason I hate Kiss is I got roped into running live sound for this like event, which was in the parking lot of like a beer store, right? So I was like the only like kind of semi competent musician around and they desperately needed somebody to run sound for this Kiss cover band, right? And they thought they were like such a big deal. They like dressed up, they knew all the songs, stuff like that. So I had like a, an eight channel board and I brought my own mics and everything like that. They had uh, they had the four piece set up and three of them were singing. So I'm setting all the microphones up and stuff like that. And they're just about to put all their makeup and whatever on and we're doing sound check. And again, so, so there's three singers, three guitar players and a drummer. And I have eight channels of audio to work with. So the drums kind of had to be sacrificed. I, I put a mic on the kick and a mic on the snare and I kind of did it. And then the drummer's like, hey, hey, Sonny, like, can, can you come talk to me a second, right? Like, totally, like, disrespectful. I'm like, all right, here we go. And he goes, uh, I noticed that you only mic'd up uh, the kick and the snare on the drum kit. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, it's kind of like all I can do here. And again, this is in, like, a parking lot, like, like in a beer tent parking lot type deal going on here. And then he goes, he goes, Sonny, let me ask you a question. And I'm like, oh, great, here we go. And he's like... You ever been to a Kiss concert? And I'm like, no, I, I've never been to a Kiss concert. And he goes, the thing about a Kiss concert, when people show up, they expect to feel the music. And he goes into this long speech about how people come to see Kiss to like feel the music and how every single time needs to be mic'd up even though you only have eight channels available for the entire band. And he kind of goes on his whole spiel about what people expect when they come to a KISS concert. Guess what? They're not at a KISS concert. They're in a parking lot at a beer tent for this cover band. Whatever. So anyways, I'm running sound. I, I just kind of like put some microphones up with some cables that ran to nowhere. And he was satisfied with that. So during the show, fake Gene Simmons, who's wearing like these like high heel boots, falls off the stage because the smoke machine like got in his eyes while he was playing bass, which was fantastic. Got a bird's eye view for that. And then afterwards, uh, fake Paul Stanley was like eating pizza in a lawn chair and his makeup was like running off and he was like just all by himself and it was one of the saddest things I've ever seen. But anyways, so there's a couple reasons I don't like Kiss and uh, you know, come at me, whatever. I can't stand Kiss, least favorite band of all time. Are you gonna make this awesome idea a series? I'd love that, man. So this is in relation to the riff deconstruction video I did on Crazy Train where I kind of take famous riffs and I break down the theory behind it. And I absolutely want to turn this into a series and I think I will, but first, you all have to do something for me first because I ask for so very little. All I want to do the next riff deconstruction video is for you guys to hook up my homegirl Andrea, go to her channel and subscribe. If we get 300 subs, she's already halfway there, she's got 150. As soon as we get 300, I'll do the next riff deconstruction video the very next day. So please, if you love me, go over, spread the love, and sub over there, I'll link you below. A question, interestingly, as this video started with falling and crashing, me falling down the stairs last week, have you ever dropped or damaged a guitar that you loved? This nightmare just happened to me when my awesome Gretsch fell, bounced and crashed after a severe FML moment that turned into a week of gloom. I had it professionally repaired, but it's just not the same. Any horror stories of that nature and how do you deal with it? As moping around, looking grief-stricken, bouts of screaming, why? And being told to get over it by my wife didn't really help. 
I have had many close calls and I have been insanely lucky. And anytime a piece of gear or a guitar is starting to slip or fall, I just go into mat full on matrix mode and everything just happens in slow motion as I dive to catch it. The only time I've actually ever broken something, surprisingly, and I'm sure something's gonna break like th the day this video posts, but uh, my very first guitar that I was actually kind of borrowing from a friend who just wasn't using it, uh, it's so embarrassing. Like I was borrowing it, I was kind of getting the hang of it, and after a week, somehow it just fell off the couch it was laying on and the neck just snapped off. And that was a super cheap guitar, it was worth like $50. So uh, I, I was like so embarrassed. I'm like, man, I, I broke your guitar, dude. He was like a hundred bucks or whatever. And uh, thankfully he was just so stoked to have like a hundred dollars and not have a guitar anymore that it wasn't a big deal. But uh, ever since then, it has not been an issue. And one thing that I can't recommend strongly enough are strap locks. I mean, you know, if it falls off a stand or something, that's one thing. But uh, another thing that I've experienced a lot is like if you're standing playing, those straps always just slip. And again, you'll get like really good at just like catching guitars once they start falling. But uh, strap locks are definitely a sound investment. And uh, I'll definitely, next week, I'll make sure to let you know which one of my guitars breaks now that I've said that I've never broken anything. So in today's music world, in the area of writing and song making, the best possible thing seems doing just as you said to make your own and produce your own, for example, Tame Impala. Question, I would guess, is this just how it is anymore? I know that a writer is not that needed, or for that matter, even an instrumentalist, to get to where you need a performer gets of the song now, uh, and the commercialization of said song. Things in most songs today in comparison to like some of the older developed songs are just not on par to them, 1940 to 1970. So I think the gist of this question is getting at how it seems that as music goes along, it gets dumbed down over and over again. And that's kind of like a sentiment that a lot of people hold. And I think that's a little bit of a generalization for sure, because there are some incredibly complex and incredibly awesome musical bands and stuff out there right now. Uh, but I think there is a point to be made when it comes to pop music. I personally kind of feel like pop music sucks nowadays, even compared to like semi recently. And it just seems to be getting simpler and dumber and dumber as time goes on. Uh, as far as like the 1940 to 1970 period that was referenced, I kind of, I can kind of see where that's coming too. Like if you look at like where old composers, like somebody like Cole Porter or something like that, like, or even like some uh, Frank Sinatra's like arrangers and stuff like that. I think that's just kind of like a different era and a different ball game. Uh, just kind of like the complexity of the music that was used back then. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, you can say it's a shame, but there's so, so many other advances in modern music and just kind of like the variety that we all have to choose from nowadays to kind of meet our tastes, I think has more than made up for maybe the lack of diverse pop music. So yeah, if, if, you, if you're not really digging anything out there, really just go hunting for different genres. I know especially in like, like classical music, like th things have never been more advanced than the current uh, day and age. Metal too, metal is kind of like really holding that torch of like musicianship with like guitars and stuff like that. And again, there's just, there's still, there's still a decent amount of rock bands out there. Not a lot of them, but there's still a lot of, a lot of good guitar stuff out there. You just might have to kind of search for it a little bit harder than maybe you used to. I have a hard time staying interested in playing the instrument I have on hand. I'll practice 20 minutes on a bass and start getting tired of it. And I want to move to guitar, but then I'll get tired of that. What do you do to keep a good mindset on enjoying the instrument at hand? For me, when it comes to practice, the hardest part is just picking the instrument up. I feel like whatever instrument it is, if I'm sitting down at it, once I've picked it up, the battle has been won. Like there are so many other things that kind of like try to divide my attention that once I finally sit down and make a commitment to doing it, I, I personally am pretty good. Now, I know a lot of people kind of like, they'll pick it up and then they'll maybe do something and maybe they'll have like a routine. And I'm, I think I'm probably gonna post a video on maybe like a daily practice routine coming up here soon. But uh, I think the best advice I can give you is just to try different forms of practice until you find something that really interests you. Now for me, when I was like, you know, more beginner intermediate level, like doing scales and stuff like that, I would always lose interest right away. Anything kind of theory related for me back at that time was like the worst, I couldn't do it. Maybe I would set up to start doing it and then I'd start playing songs and then I'd be good. So for me, like taking more of like a song writing or like a song playing approach, like really helped me kind of focus in and try to kind of maybe play along or like jam to like an actual song that I like. So there are a lot of different things you can do, a lot of different things you can try. 
looper pedal is a great idea to kind of like maybe make your own recorded stuff and then try to play over that. Playing, uh, just finding like a, like a Pandora station or some kind of like internet radio thing to kind of try to play along with and try to like have your ears like develop is another great idea. So really just kind of keep trying different things. If you, if you find you're trying the same old practice routines and you're always getting bored from it, it's definitely time to try something new because there's really an infinite amount of ways that you can kind of like try to trick yourself into being more interested in just having fun. Uh, just kind of like learning or playing an instrument. Any opinion on Chris Thile? So I think I pronounced his name right. Definitely could be wrong about that. But uh, yeah, so he is the, if you don't know, the mandolin player for Nickel Creek. And he actually is in a lot of different groups. And I love this guy. In fact, my favorite uh, project of his is by far the Goat Rodeo Sessions. If you never heard of that, uh, this is also going to be listing homework for this week. I'm going to link you to... Uh, a song that they did. In fact, this is kind of like a, a full album they made. I actually bought this at like Starbucks, I think like four years ago or whatever. But it's like him, uh, Yo-Yo Ma, Edgar Meyer. They have a couple different uh, singers on a couple of them. But a lot of the instrumentals are just like fantastic. It's just like four beastly classical, well, they're not all classical musicians, but four beastly players kind of getting together, all from kind of like different genres, different walks of life, and kind of just you know, coalescing into this awesome four piece unit with kind of special guests and stuff like that. And uh, Chris is just like an absolute beast. So he's got a lot of other projects going on. Really just YouTube his name. And if you're into mandolin stuff at all, he's kind of like the go to guy to check out. So definitely check that out. You better sub to that channel. I told you to. I, I'm, I swear to God, I'm not going to make that video until it gets to at least 300. Like like 300 is not that much. Like the guy who like eats uh, TV dinners like live streams them. That guy's got like 5,000, so come on. But uh, yeah, definitely any questions or comments you have, hit me up on the comments, Twitter, Instagram, and I will catch you guys later. Thanks a lot.